we are going to make our own paper. I've done a lot of research over the past year on paper making, reading different books, studying different videos, and I would like to put some of that to use today. My name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mix Media. I'm following a prompt. This month it's making paper. What you'll need to complete this project in your paper components is plant debris, paper scraps, and water. The tools that you're going to need are simplistic. We're going to utilize scissors, a blender, a sponge, a tub, some shop towels or towels, and to create your mold and decal, you'll need two picture frames, a little bit of window screen, and a stapler. So the tools are not out, out of the ordinary or crazy. Let's get started in making that mold and decal, which is the actual tools that we're going to be utilizing to pull that paper and mold that paper. I'm starting with two frames from the dollar store. I thought I picked up two frames the same size, but they happen to be two different sizes, which is going to work out fine. We'll make the mold out of the smaller frame and the decal out of the larger. First thing I'm doing is pulling all of the staples out of it from their packaging and then the little tabs that hold the picture in place. I'm going to pull those out with my pliers too. So add to your list a set of pliers because I forgot that I was going to have to do this. I have this window screen, which you can purchase at any big box store, Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, in the U.S., in the other parts of the world. I'm sure you have the same type of stores for DIY homeowners as well as a big box discount store. So I just cut that a little bit larger in my frame and I am taking my stapler and opening it, opening it up and creating a staple gun, so to speak, out of it. It is probably the easiest thing to utilize because we have them on hand. My other mold and decal that I made, I did do in my husband's shop and used a staple gun. This one works just as well. I'm stapling around the outside edge, then pulling the screen tight. So I'm just stapling into the frame itself. And now I'll stretch that screen as tight as I can get it, hold it down, and staple that other side. And while a little awkward <laughs> to hold the stapler this way, it does work just fine. And you'll also notice I painted my staples gold. That's not necessary. But I had those, I had painted a row of staples gold for another project. Now that I have both of the long edges stapled, I'm pulling tight the top edge, stapling that down, and I'll do the same on the bottom. Then I'll fold over the corners and just kind of put those into place as well and just kind of staple some of that excess down. I didn't trim it back off. I just folded it down and stapled it once again. So there is your decal. This is what you'll be pulling the paper out of the water with. And the other frame creates a mold. And if I flip that over and use that outside edge, I will have a larger piece of paper. Turn it over and utilize that inside um, raised part and I'll have a smaller piece of paper. So there we go. The mold and decal complete. I think the start to finish time on this, I actually timed it. It took me 20 minutes to make this mold and decal. So there are your two components right there. 20 minute in time investment. This is your decal. And this is your mold. And using this edge right here, 
as my mold, I will get a larger piece of paper, which that piece of paper will turn out to be about this size. And if I flip that over and use this inside raised area as my mold and pull my paper like that, I'll get a little note size piece of paper. So I think this mold and deckle will work just fine. What I'm actually going to pull the paper with today is, because I've already made the paper, I decided to come back and make the mold and deckle to show you how I got this. This is the one I made in my husband's shop. I had used his staple gun and I also put some duct tape over the edge of it just because some of those, sta I, I didn't want to cut my hands on anything on there. So to start making this paper, we're going to use these iris leaves. This is the debris that came off of the iris in my garden. And I am just going to cut it into tiny pieces. And I, that's, this is where you're using the tub. This is just a little uh, storage tub that I had. And I am putting the cut pieces of this plant in here. I'm also going to add some tiny scraps of paper here in just a moment. But once I get enough in here to create, I'm looking to make maybe eight to 10 sheets of paper today, I will fill it with water and allow that to soak. Now the little tiny sheets of scrap paper. I added in that coffee filter. There's some tea bags in here. There's whatever is in my bin I am putting in. I keep this bin underneath my work table in my shop. And when I'm playing, <laughs> I put any tiny scrap inside this bin. So there we have all of the pieces cut up. I'm soaking them in water and I let that soak for a couple hours. I am moving this to the outside deck of my shop to get all of my components together to create this paper. So I have my paper soaking. I have my molds and decal here. My tub of water that I am going to actually dip this, uh, create my pulp in, put my pulp in, and then I'll be dipping my paper. But first, we need to get the pulp together. We have all of our pieces ready to go. I have my shop towels, everything set up. I want to fill my blender with some of this soaked pulp. Um, I only soak this for a couple of hours. If you have the time, and can soak it overnight. It even gets softer and it makes a finer paper because it blends up finer. So that's up to you. I personally was uh, in a rush to get this done, so I only let it soak for, for a small amount of time. So I have all of my pulp now blended and put into my tub. So I am just simply putting my mold on top of my decal and dipping that mold and decal in that water and you can see that um, the sheet of paper has been molded on top of the decal. I'm allowing the water to kind of drain off, flipping it over and hitting it with my sponge to release some of that excess water. And that also will help compress the paper by pressing on the screen with the sponge. It will kind of form that paper. So you can see there, I have just a little tiny hole. I'm gonna mend that real fast by putting some of that pulp right there and pressing it into place with that sponge. So there you go, there's our first piece of paper on a shop towel. These shop towels are wonderful because they 
are very water um, they take water quite well. They don't fall apart. And I can stack my sheets of paper one on top of the other. So I'm dipping my mold and deckle into that pulp and creating the second sheet of paper. I'm allowing the, well, I actually did it upside down. I had my mold upside down. So let's do that once again. And I'm just making sure all the pulp is lying evenly there on my deco. Letting that excess water drain out of the bottom of that screen back into my pulp. There is our second sheet of paper. We'll flip that over. Take those sponges and pull out the excess water. That's it. That is how simple it is to make a sheet of paper. So the tools are simple. I'm sure you have them on hand. Now let me talk just a little bit about the blender. I have a blender that I have set aside for my craft room only. I don't use it for food or anything else. It is one that I picked up and I use it exclusively for making paper. And once again, I found a little thin area that I want to just kind of fill in. So I've pulled from my pulp and I'm squishing it into place with my sponge and my deckle. So there we go. Sheet of paper number two. Lay down another shop towel and we will just continue in making one sheet of paper after another. And the amount of scrap that I used to create my pulp, I wound up getting eight sheets of paper. So it was a nice afternoon of crafting and I have ton, a ton <laughs> of those iris leaves left over. And I thought uh, today is going to be a rainy day. I thought I would take those over to my deck, start a nice fire in the deck and set and just cut all of those up and get some pulp soaking and get some additional paper made. So while you're watching the video, I will probably be sitting on my deck with a cup of coffee and nice fire going, getting ready to make more paper. Now this flip that you do, I try to do it pretty fast so that pulp doesn't start to peel away from that screen. So I kind of get it into position and then just flip it over really fast. And I think we've probably seen enough sheets made that you get the idea. I would love to see the paper that you make. If you would like to share your creations pop over to my Facebook page, which you can find over on, it's not page, Facebook group, which you can find over on Facebook at Two Old Crows Mixed Media. Colleen manages that group for me and she does a wonderful job and they are always doing all kinds of interesting things with swaps and she has different prompts that they are utilizing in color and there's just a lot of very talented people within that group that are sharing their work. So I encourage you to, to pop over. Some follow my prompts, some don't, doesn't matter. Uh, as long as they're having fun, I am all about it. So here are all of the sheets of paper that we have. And I can, as you can see, I can pick them up one by one. I laid them in the house on the table, turned on a ceiling fan and let them sit overnight. Now I that they are dry, 
I am releasing them from the shop towels. And you can see how these shop towels just stay in perfect condition. They dry really nice with the sheet of paper. They come off and they can be utilized once again. But this is the paper that we received. You can see that the um, medium that we use, the, the iris sleeves and the scraps have lightened as they dried. So I have a nice khaki beigey colored piece of paper. I am getting things ready for a big project that I am have in my head that hasn't manifested itself into actual physical working on it yet, but I am gathering items and this paper will fit in perfectly with what I plan on doing. So as I said before, I got about eight sheets of paper as you can see, you, ha you can see some of those white scraps come through in that pulp, but that pulp um, kind of took on the color of those iris leaves more than it did, did the white, which I'm happy with. To kind of finish these off, I want to give them a quick once over with my iron. I do turn the steam on and steam iron each piece of paper and it just kind of takes all the wrinkles out of it and makes it a nice flat sheet and i'm pretty happy with how how this paper has turned out what do you think um, if you like this video and you feel like you received some good information from it or just like the project that was completed, please give me that thumbs up. It does help my channel. It helps it be recommended to more people. So I would appreciate that. You can fold it over. This paper would be great. Fold it over, put in a journal like this. But since I'm not working with it yet, I'm going to go ahead and flatten it out. And here is our finished product. So we have eight sheets all completed with that nice beigey iris color and the little flecks of white from our scrap paper. So once again, thank you so much for being here. I hope you'll join me in these coffee cup prompts is what I call them. There is the playlist right here of all of the things that have been done thus far. I shall say bye for now.